Thanks for watching this screencast on expressions and equations. Here are the objectives for this screencast. Uh, as we discussed in class, remember this uh, phrase means learners will be able to. So we're suggesting that learners will be able to translate between verbal and algebraic expressions and equations. So what's the difference between expressions and equations? Well, a mathematical expression is a combination of numbers and operations. When I when I say operations, what I mean here is you know addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division. Uh, you could even argue like uh, taking something to a power like squared or cubed or things like that. Those are all known operations. Uh, the numbers themselves can either be known or unknown. Uh, here are several examples here. I could just write. 4 plus 6 is a mathematical expression. In this case, I know both of the numbers involved, and there's only one operation, this plus sign. Here's another example. 10 divided by some number x plus y. Uh, th there's another example here. Uh, in this case, we don't know two of the numbers involved. There are actually two operations. One of them is... Uh, this fraction bar, which is an implication of division, and then the addition sign as well. Here's one more example. Uh, n squared plus 3n minus 2. Here I don't know n, the value that works in both of these terms, uh, but I do know some of the numbers here. This 3n really means 3 times n. It's just uh, worth reminding you that in high school math, uh, we typically don't write multiplication between a number and a variable using that symbol. We usually just say 3n. Now an equation is a math sentence that relates two expressions. And these will always contain an equal sign. So somewhere in a math equation there should be an equal sign. A really easy way to make this happen would be to take two of the expressions that we wrote up above and set them equal to each other. So here's an example of a math equation. 4 plus 6 equals 10 divided by x plus y. Uh, in this case, we, don't know, we still don't know what x and y equal, uh, but we do know that these two quantities are equal to one another. You actually know a lot of these equations. We spent a lot of time in Algebra 1 solving such equations as well. Um, so that's the basic difference here. Okay, what you see on this screen is what you're going to see in as a feature in probably every screencast, if not all of them, most of them, that you view for our class. There's going to come to at least one point where we're going to ask you to stop and to see what you know, give yourself some formative assessment. The question here is which of the examples below represent expressions and which ones represent equations? So what we're actually going to do is to pause the video and then either on scratch paper off to your side or just in having some way of keeping track of your answers, try to decide for yourself which of these are expressions, which ones are equations. Pause the video and we'll check back with you in a minute. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, one of the things that might be worth pointing out is it might be a little bit easier to tell which ones are equations because you can find the equal signs. Uh, in these expressions, I think B and C both are definitely equations uh, because they have two expressions that are set equal to one another. Uh, something that you might have thought about on C, especially if you remember some Algebra 1 ideas, is that there's actually not a value for A that makes equation C true. Uh, but it still is an equation. Just because it can't necessarily be solved uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't count as an equation. Uh, D and E require some maybe a little bit of extra work here, but as far as expressions go, I think A counts as an expression. You've got whatever A, B, and C refer to here, you've got the A squared, A times itself, plus B squared, minus, and here's that 2AB, which means, as, as you recall, 2 times A times B times, and you may not even know what this cosine of C business is, I'm guessing you talked a little bit last year in geometry about uh, trigonometry, but that's what that is. Uh, this is actually an expression. It's a very complicated one, but it involves just addition, subtraction, and a lot of multiplication of some numbers. So what about D and E? In D and E, it might be easier to try to convert what's written 
uh, into a written out algebraic expression to try and decide. So if I look at D, it says the product of, the product of makes me think about multiplication, uh, the rectangle's length L and its width W. And this expression here shows basically all it says on D. I don't see any implication of an equal sign. To me, that counts as an expression. So that's an expression. And let's look at E. Sales tax in Indiana is uh, 0.08 times the cost of an item. You know, one thing about this uh, sentence here is that it doesn't tell me specifically what my uh, variables or unknowns are. So maybe we should define a couple. Sales tax in Indiana, maybe we should use a lowercase t for tax. Is, you know, when we see is, we're saying that something is equal. That should answer our question, shouldn't it? 0 0.08 times uh, the cost of an item. Maybe I'll use C for cost. So if T equals 0 0.08 times C, that has to go as an equation, doesn't it? All right. Okay, the task that we're wor focusing on in the screencast is converting between the two. So uh, we're going to be working on tasks that are not unlike what we did for D and E on the self-check a minute ago. This chart is from your textbook. It suggests some key phrases uh, or words that might help you translate between the two types of expressions, verbal expressions and algebraic expressions. So addition is implied from all of these words or phrases and plus sub, increased by, more than, subtraction. I'm thinking about minus, I'm thinking about the difference, I'm thinking about decreased by. This one here, less than, you've got to be a little careful with, and we'll address that in a minute. Multiplication uh, would be something when you see times or product, or especially if it involves a fraction uh, of, like the phrase half of a number would be like half of whatever that number is, half of n. And then division, which is, you know, uh, really written in high school math more often as like a fraction. That's actually where that division symbol came from. I'm not sure if that connection's ever been made to you before. Uh, divided by or the word quotient is the one that you're looking for. Let's do some of these together. Let's try some uh, translating between a verbal expression or equation and an algebraic expression. And what I find helpful is to read the whole statement and then kind of go back and break it into pieces. So if I look at A, the sum of 6 times some number and 25. Now, I don't see an equal sign. I don't see is. I don't see equals or anything like that. This is going to be an expression. I see the sum of something and something. And that makes me think that I'm going to need something here and then a plus sign and then something else. Now, what are those two things that we're adding together? Well, one of them is 6 times some number. Now, just like in the last example on the self-check, I don't know what variable to use, uh, so I'll just pick x for some number. 6 times some number we could write as 6x. If you wrote 6 times x with the time symbol, you wouldn't be wrong. We just don't do that very often in high school math. And then the other thing that we're adding together is this, 25. So this expression is 6x plus 25. Let's do the same thing, kind of thing for B. We've got 7 less than the cube of some number equals. Ah, the number equals. Equals is in this. I'm going to have an equation. I've got to set two things equal to one another. Uh, so maybe I should work on each side independently. I should say 7 less than the cube of some number. Here's that less than. The thing you got to know about less than, and it, uh, like 7 less than the cube of some number, is that I need to take that second thing and then subtract 7. So the tricky thing about less than is that the order in which those two things being subtracted appears in your equation looks different than it would verbally. Now what's the thing that I'm taking 7 less than? Well, it's the cube of some number. So I need to pick what some number is just to be different this time. I'll choose n. The cube of that number then is going to be n times n times n or n cubed. And what does it equal? Well, it equals that same number, n. So here's my equation, n cubed minus 7 equals n. 
And then the last one on this page, four times the square of a number increased by five times the same number. Okay. Well, I've got four times. First of all, I don't see an equal sign. I don't. This is going to be an expression. I've got four times the square of a number. So some number x, if I square it and then multiply that by four, I've got four x squared, four times the square of a number, increased by uh, implies that we're going to be adding. And what are we increasing it by? Well, we're increasing it by five times the same number. So the same number would be x again. Five times that number is 5x. How about 4x squared plus 5x? All right, we should do a couple that go the other way that ask us to take the algebraic expression or equation and turn it into a verbal statement. So let's look at d. Uh, on the left side of this equation, I see a difference. So I might want to write something like the difference of... And by the way, there's a lot of things you could write here that would get you full credit. I'm just using one of those uh, phrases from that chart. The difference of, well, what two things are being subtracted? Well, one of them is 3 times n. Uh, so I'll say 3 times some number. It wouldn't be wrong to say 3 times n. I'm just trying to be a little uh, maybe more official sounding. The difference of 3 times some number and 37. And then what, what does it equal? Uh, you could write equals, you could write is, you could write is equal to 75. And this is a math sentence. You know what I realize? Since it's a math sentence, I should make this a capital T. The difference of 3 times some number and 37 is 75. There we go, that works. Here on this uh, example E, this is actually an equation from physics. This is an equation for the uh, kinetic energy K if you know uh, the mass of an object that's moving with velocity V. Mass is M here. Uh, now you don't need to know the physics behind this to get this done correctly. Since I do know this is from physics, instead of choosing like some value or some number, I'm just going to use the, the variables chosen. I'm going to say K is, or K, let's write K equals. K equals. Um, I do see this uh, this half times something, which we saw on the chart might be written best as half of. And what do I see left? I see a product. Half of the product of. Uh, what are two things? Uh, they're M and v squared would be really elegantly written as the square of v. And there it is. k equals one half of the product of m and the square of v. Thanks for watching.